In this video, we're going to going to take a look at um, something referred to as the mean value theorem and uh, and how it leads to an approximation uh, approach to approximating functions uh, referred to as the Taylor series. Uh, the idea is that if we have, or the, the idea starts off with uh, uh, th this relationship here, if we have a function f of x uh, defined over a range a to b, it's continuous and it's differentiable, uh, its area is going to be the integral from a to b f of x df. It's a definite integral and so the area under this curve would be defined by this integral. So we can we can say that that at some point along this curve between a and b, f of x will take on a value which is equal to the average value of f of x between a and b, such that <clears throat> if we multiply this value times a minus b, we get the area of an equivalent rectangle. An area of this rectangle equals the area under this curve. So we can say that f of x1, the mean value of x of x, f of x, would be equal to the area, uh, would be equal to this definite integral, which is the area under the curve, uh, divided by b minus a. So we can rearrange that to state that the area under the curve would be equal to f of x1 times b minus a. Uh, so this just gives us the area, this is the area in this case of the rectangle. And so we have this basic statement that the area under f of x is equal to the area of the equivalent uh, rectangle with height, uh, mean height f of x or f of x1. So a, a lot of the development of these ideas is related to making approximations. Uh, and so we can continue this on. Uh, we, we, if we take a look at the slopes or the tangent lines along the length of f of x, at, at some point there's going to be an average, an average value of the tangent which is going to equal the slope of the secant line which intersects the function f of x. At some point between a and x there will be a derivative which will be equal in value to the secant line. <clears throat> and a statement of that is that the at f prime, in other words the derivative of f evaluated at x1, this particular point here, would be equal to the difference in the values of f at uh, x minus that at a over the range x minus a. So basically the slope of the secant line, that's the slope of this line here. So th this can be rearranged to yield f of x is equal to f of a plus f prime of x1, this average derivative, or average tangent, if you will, uh, times x minus a, <coughs> which is the range of the independent variable. <coughs> so th this is what's known as the mean value theorem. So we have the uh, derivative of x1 is equal to f of x minus f of a over x minus a. And um, <coughs> in this, stated in this form here, we're looking at f of x. And the reason we do this is, uh, again, because a lot of what we're, the ideas that we're developing here represent an approximation for some function f of x at a particular point. So let's take a practical look at um, how this works out. In other words, how, you know, how good is this relationship for approximating uh, the value of a function? This will be something maybe you could do in your head. Let's say you wanted to estimate the square root of 110. So our f of x is x to the one half power. So think of think of this curve. It doesn't look like x. It's not x to the one half, but we have a function which is equal to x to the one half. 
and its derivative is equal to 1 over 2 times x to the 1 half. <clears throat> so using this, using this relationship here, we have f of x, which is f of 100 plus 10, which is what we want to know. We want to know what the square root of 110 is. Well, we're just going to say it's equal to f of 100, which we know is 10, times the derivative evaluated at, um, <clears throat> at 10 uh, times the uh, difference. So, so we have 10 plus 1 over 2 times the square root of 100, which is 20, so be this term here, times 10, which is our delta A. In other words, we're 10 away from 100. And this turns out, this gives us a pretty good approach. That turns out to be 10.5, and that's pretty close to 10.488, which is the actual square root of 110. So the approximation works pretty good. This is our derivative evaluated at uh, uh, 10. So, so you can see that as an, uh, now, now you're, you're looking at it and you're saying, well, that's just, you know, you're just using the definition of the derivative, which is true, but notice that the delta x here is not a dx. It's not infinitesimally small. And maybe it's not a gap as large as this, but it is certainly a significant uh, distance away from the value uh, 100. So, so it does give us, give us a good approximation. So uh, the mean value in this case is just the average value of the derivative over the range a to x uh, divided by the range. And that, again, is referred to as the, as the mean value theorem. So as we extend this idea working towards the development of the Taylor series, we say, OK, well, we did this for the function f. We did it for the function f prime. Let's do it for the function f double prime. Uh, f double prime of x is going to be equal to the integral a to x of f double prime of x dx over x minus a. Uh, what is this integral? Well, this integral is just f prime of, of x. So when we take a look at this uh, integration up here, we have that the second derivative at some point, x2, will take on a value which will be equal to the derivatives at uh, x minus the derivative of a over x minus a. So in other words, it will have an average value. And this integral up here is just equal to f prime of x minus f prime of a. So f prime of x is equal to, we have another equation now. We can just say that f prime of x is equal to f prime of a minus, or plus f double prime of x2 times x minus a, where x2 lies between x and a. So now, um, you know, trying, trying to do some of this stuff on your own to develop this idea, let's multiply by dx and then integrate. Multiply this expression by dx and then let's integrate it. So we're doing the same thing to both sides of the equation. We multiply both sides by uh, dx. We get uh, f prime of x dx is equal to f prime of a dx plus f double prime of x2 evaluated at x2 times the range x minus a. And then we integrate that to get this expression here. And we've just pulled out the constants. Remember, this derivative here is just a constant. This uh, second derivative evaluated at x2 is another constant. So pull that out. And now we're looking at this evaluation. And we're rearranging uh, terms again, just looking at uh, f of x. So f of x is equal to f of a plus the, we've got the first derivative, we've got the second derivative, and then we have these terms, which are the range squared. So in this case, over 2, so coming from the derivative. And we can keep repeating this process for su successive derivatives so that the integration of f triple prime, the third derivative, evaluated at some value x3, is going to be the average 
of the derivatives between f of x and f of a, f double prime of x and f double prime of a. So if we do this for the third derivative, we end up with this expression, where the second derivative we put over here on the left. And we're going to multiply again by dx and integrate. So same process over and over again. So multiplying and integrating, and we get an expression then for the integral of f double prime of x. The first derivative of, of x is equal to, and now we have these three terms. We could have obtained this directly from the relationship that we have for the second derivative with a substitution of f prime of x for f of x, uh, and so on. So, <clears throat> so we have this re relationship. We can then multiply by dx and integrate. So just kind of repeating this process, going on as many times as we'd like. And we can see in this case, if, if we stop with the third derivative, that we have, um, you know, we're developing a power series here in x minus a. So these are constants in here. And we can see that the denominators here are, actually we could put a 1 beneath this. But this is 2 factorial. This would be 1 factorial. We could have 0 factorial in the um, denominator here. And, and this is 3 factorial. So we're beginning to see some kind of a pattern emerge. And that pattern, when we extend it to the nth derivative, we have what's called the Taylor series. So we have f of x is equal to f of a plus f prime of a times x minus a, f double prime of a over 2, third derivative over 3 factorial, the n minus 1th derivative over n minus 1 factorial, and we have this quantity, um, x minus a, x minus a squared, x minus a to the n minus 1th, power, x minus a to the nth power, and so on. So it goes on and on and on as far as you as you can take it, or as far as you want. The idea is you, you can usually get by with a, as a, with a good approximation with four or five of these terms so that you don't have to go out to a large number of terms in order to estimate what f of x is at some point. And these series, we've talked about them before when we talked about the total natural strain. Um, we were actually using a Taylor series expansion, and and so it, it it's a, it's a good it's a, it's a good approach for approximating f of x when x minus a is fairly small, not infin not infinitesimally small. And so the next time we're also going to look at well we'll look at some you know some applications we'll work through some problems. And we'll also look at a special case when A is set to 0, which is known as the Maclaurin series. So, um, hope, you, uh, hope you enjoyed that, and uh, we'll see you next time.